below. Winters are long, lasting 17 months. With the coming of spring, the sun looms large in the skies over this hapless moon as the ice cracks and melts violently. Huge icebergs calve into a stormy and fast-rising ocean. For two preciously short periods, during the spring thaw and the autumn rains, the climate on this Earth-like moon is balmy and comfortable. At a distance of 93 million miles from the star, roughly the same distance as Earth from the sun, the elliptical orbit of this planet and its moon crosses an area around the star some scientists call the Goldilocks zone. The conditions here are just right for life. If you're too close to the star, then it's too hot. If you're too far away, then it's gonna be too cold and everything's gonna be icy. But then if you're right in the middle, it's just right. Every star has a Goldilocks zone. Where that zone is depends on the size and temperature of the star. In our solar system, Venus marks the inner boundary and Mars the outer boundary. Earth and its abundance of life is right in the middle. The yo-yo planet passes through the Goldilocks zone twice a year. For three and a half months during the spring as it races inbound, and again in the fall for three and a half months as it hurtles back into the colder reaches of space. Could life survive the conditions outside the Goldilocks zone? There could be life forms that are smart enough to hibernate, as do animals on the Earth during the winter season. If this sounds fantastic, I offer you the tidal zones on the Earth. On the tidal zones, life proliferates, of course, near the seashore, and they do so despite tides. The water coming in, covering many of the life forms, the water going out at low tide, and yet those species survive perfectly well. The strange cycle of the yo-yo planet's orbit creates fleeting conditions suitable for life, but also for death. Some alien planets are even more bizarre. Imagine a world that has no star to orbit. Scientists speculate that our galaxy is teeming with rogue planets, adrift in the murky lanes of interstellar space. These are orphaned worlds, planets that are booted from their solar systems by the chaos of planetary migration. Astronomers call such worlds planemos. Planemos are planets without a star. They're just drifting through the galaxy indefinitely. What massive force would it take to kick a planet out of the solar system? When a young star forms with a contingent of planets around it, many of those planets gravitationally interact with each other. They yank on each other, slingshot each other, so that one of them is ejected from the planetary system, voted off the island, if you will. If you were fortunately a resident on a planet that was kicked out by a, a collision or a near collision with another large object, you'd probably rapidly move out of the habitable zone. There are hundreds of billions of these lost, wayward, poor, wandering planets out in our Milky Way galaxy with no parent star to warm them up. Cold dark, quiet. Because Planemos have no sun, they are worlds without days or years. They keep vigil through an eternal night. Planemos are solitary wanderers, sentinels of the galaxy. 
Just because it's out there drifting in space doesn't mean a planemo is dead. If the planemo is a rocky world, it could well have life on it. A small rocky planemo without an atmosphere will slumber in extreme cold. Far colder than the coldest winter day on our own South Pole. But a planemo large enough to retain an atmosphere traps the heat generated when the planet was first formed. It is the ultimate greenhouse effect. The heat and energy comes from the molten core deep inside the lonely planet. If the planemo is a gas giant like Jupiter, it may have a system of moons. The gravitational pull between the planemo and its moons creates friction, causing the interior of the moons to stay warm. These moons could also have life on them in the same way that Jupiter's moon Io has volcanoes and has a lot of heat energy being generated by interactions with Jupiter and the other moons. If anything lives here, it will be single cells like common bacteria found on Earth, not complex life forms. Without a sun to provide photosynthesis, these tiny organisms derive their energy from the chemistry in the soil of the planemo, or its moon. On Earth, there are similar conditions. Colonies of bacteria are found deep within mine shafts in South Africa. They have no access to oxygen nor light and survive entirely on the chemicals they make from the surrounding dirt. Their metabolisms are extremely slow and they reproduce only once every thousand years. If life dwells on a sunless planemo, it could be organisms like them, marooned when their planet was young. While planemos slumber undisturbed, there are worse places to be in the universe. Like in the company of this lethal pulsar, some 980 light years from Earth, in the constellation of Virgo. From afar, a pulsar looks like a blinking light. But up close, pulsars machine gun their surroundings with deadly radiation. They are no place for planets. Yet something interferes with the precision of this pulsar. One explanation is that the anomaly is caused by a planet. But many astronomers are skeptical that planets orbiting a pulsar can exist. The reason that's a problem is because pulsars are formed in these incredible explosions. When a red giant star explodes, a titanic fireball known as a supernova unleashes as much energy in one minute as our sun generates in its lifetime. When a star goes supernova, the shockwave is so immense, it's hard to imagine any planet surviving that. When the cosmic dust clears, all that remains is the crushed core of the red giant, pulsing in the heart of an expanding debris field. Matter blasted from the colossal explosion falls back to the pulsar and forms a disk. Within this chaos, a new world arises, born of fire.